to see the breakthrough about to happen, you could now be able to put all that together and say this is going to be the thing. But the breakthrough has to have some specific characteristics. It has to be extremely powerful and all pervasive. It has to be very cheap. I mean, potentially very cheap and potentially inexhaustible. I mean, something that's not going to be, you know, that you will have too little of. So those characteristics make it possible for a breakthrough to really make the difference. And also it has to be able to bring all the technologies together. In fact, uh, the internet as such and the, tel the, the telecommunications networks as such uh, were not so clearly transformed in the early days of the technological revolution. It, they were always talking about this and there were some very terrible stories about people trying to, to buy telecom companies or computer companies in order to, because it was clear that it had to be blended. But it didn't happen, it happened after a while. So even to know what will be the infrastructure which is so important of the next revolution, Maybe it'll just be the internet based on bioelectronics. Uh, the, between the railways of the second surge and the railways of the third surge, there was a major difference, iron and steel. Iron was very limited. It could only take so much pressure. It could not take tension. It was brittle. So you only had, you know, 12 to 20 miles an hour maximum. So you could really do very little, and therefore you only had national railways. When steel came on, and steel got better and better and better, it was possible to make transcontinental railways, and, and very fast. And of course, the steam engine for ships. And then you could really make steel ships and steel engines. 